Hi everyone, and welcome to Shukin Science. In this video, we'll talk about a type of cell division known as mitosis. Now, mitosis is an essential function for life. Every single organism on our planet does this process because it allows them to take a parent cell and then go through a few simple steps and essentially split into two identical daughter cells. This is the process that organisms use to grow, to repair their tissues, and to maintain cells as they die throughout their lifespan. So regardless of whether species reproduce sexually or asexually, all organisms use mitosis in order to grow, maintain, and repair their somatic cells. And remember, a somatic cell is any cell in your body other than a gamete. So if the goal of mitosis is to take a parent cell, which in humans would be diploid, and divide to produce two identical diploid daughter cells, then the first thing that needs to happen before cell division begins is the DNA needs to duplicate. So before we get into the stages of mitosis, we're actually going to look at what the cell is doing during this part of the cell cycle here, known as interphase. Now interphase is not part of mitosis, and actually cells tend to spend most of their lifespan in interphase, because this is where they're just kind of growing and hanging out and doing what they need to do to survive. So interphase can be split into three parts. During G1, the cell almost doubles in size. This is where it's carrying out its essential functions. During this S or synthesis phase, that's where the DNA gets duplicated. And during G2, this is also where the cell continues to grow and carry out those functions required for life. Now, technically, if we took a sample of tissues and looked at them under a microscope, most cells would be an interphase but it wouldn't be very exciting to look at because during this part of the cell cycle, the DNA inside the nucleus of the cell is unwound. It's kind of this loose, jumbled mess of genetic material known as chromatin. So cells during interphase, not particularly exciting to look at. However, eventually when the cell gets ready to divide, to divide and it enters prophase of mitosis, we're going to see that chromatin condense to form chromosomes. And this is how we know that mitosis is beginning, is when we start to see chromosomes appear in the cell. However, I am actually going to draw DNA out in chromosome format earlier in the cycle, just so that when we have our final cells produced, we have something to compare our DNA to, again, in chromosome format. So keep in mind, although I'm gonna draw chromosomes here, they should actually look like chromatin. Okay, so when the cell is in this G1 part of interphase, recall that in humans, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes inside the nucleus of each of our cells. And they are paired because for each chromosome, you have a copy from your dad and a copy of that same chromosome with the same arrangement of genes from your mom. However, we wouldn't necessarily call them identical chromosomes because although they carry the exact same genes and they have their centromere in the same location, because one is from mom and one is from dad, the alleles carried on each chromosome might differ slightly. And so at this stage, we call those homologous chromosomes. And again, you have 23 pairs of these. Not technically during interphase. Like I said, it should be unraveled right now, looking more like chromatin, but just for the sake of 
this diagram. We're gonna draw them as chromosomes. Um, I am gonna draw another pair just so we can see what two sets of chromosomes are doing. But again, keep in mind, technically there should be 23 in here. Okay, so after the cell moves into that synthesis portion of, of um, interface, then that's where we're gonna see the DNA duplicate. So now, instead of one paternal copy and one maternal copy for this first chromosome, we're actually going to see two paternal copies of that same chromosome joined by a single centromere and two maternal copies, again, joined by a single centromere. And now, because these are literally identical copies of one another, they contain the same alleles because they're both from that paternal parental chromosome. Now, these are called sister chromatids. So we would have two pairs of sister chromatids in this cell so far. But of course, all the other chromosomes get duplicated as well. So now for our second set of chromosomes, we are also going to have two maternal chromatids and two paternal chromatids. Okay, so again, this is what the cell is doing for most of its lifespan, this interphase. And eventually, when that cell needs to divide, for some of the reasons we talked about previously, then the first thing that's going to happen is the chromatin that I should have drawn in this nucleus will condense to form chromosomes. So here is where we actually will see these chromosomes like this. So actually, mitosis is really easy to study under a microscope because the DNA condenses to form these very visible chromosomes. All right, a couple of other things happen during this first part of mitosis known as prophase. During this stage, we start to see the nuclear membrane break down. So that's why I've drawn it kind of as a dotted line here. We also see these protein complexes called centrioles form, and they're going to make their way to the poles of the cell. And then from those centrioles, we're gonna start seeing spindle fibers form. Spindle fibers, are long protein complexes that are going to attach eventually to the centromeres of each chromosome. And then they're gonna push them around the cell to ensure that we get an equal division of chromosomes in our eventual daughter cells. So this is what prophase looks like of mitosis. Next, the cell is going to enter stage two of mitosis called metaphase. And this is where our sister chromatids are going to start to align in single file along this center part of the cell known as the equator or the metaphase plate. And the reason why they're able to align in this perfect little straight line like this is again because of the spindle fibers. The spindle fibers that are forming from the centrioles, they attach to the centromeres of each chromosome and they're going to push them along this equator of the cell. And so the vocab that we use here to describe this process is really important because the way that the chromosomes line up will allow for equal division and identical daughter cells. So during metaphase of mitosis, what we see is sister chromatids lining up in single file. And the reason why the vocab we use here is so important is because this looks very different when we compare it to metaphase of meiosis. Meiosis is the process very similar to this, but instead of using the cell division phases to make somatic cells, meiosis uses these same stages to make gametes, which are 
haploid instead of diploid. And so it's really, really important to understand that during metaphase of mitosis, our sister chromatids are all gonna line up in single file because this looks completely different in metaphase of meiosis. Anyways, then the cell is going to enter stage three of mitosis, which is anaphase. And during anaphase, those little spindle fibers that were attached to the centromeres of each chromosome, they're going to start to shorten, kind of like a fishing rod. So they're gonna to start to pull those sister chromatids apart. So this maternal chromatid will get pulled to this side or this pole of the cell. Whereas this maternal chromatid will get pulled to the opposite pole of the cell. And same with all the other chromatids in our diagram. Okay. So again, the vocab, really important to get right here. I can't just say chromosomes separate because that's a little bit too vague. Instead, I'm going to say sister chromatids separate during anaphase of mitosis. And then as they get pulled to opposite poles of the cell, then eventually the cell is going to enter stage four of mitosis, which is telophase. Now, during telophase, we're gonna to start to see two new nuclear membranes form around the new sets of chromosomes that were pulled to the opposite sides of each cell. So it's gonna look something like this. These two chromosomes from chromosome one will end up over here. And these two chromosomes from chromosome two will end up here. And then same with our pairs on the opposite side here. All right. And what you're probably starting to notice is within each of these new nuclei that are forming, we end up with a set of chromosomes that is not only identical to one another, but will eventually end up being identical to our original parent cell. So that actually marks the end of mitosis. Mitosis only consists of these four stages here. Once mitosis is complete, then the cell is going to split into two. So we're actually going to get what's called a little cleavage furrow start to form, where we see the cytoplasm beginning to pinch off. This is after telophase is complete. And then that's going to be followed by what's called cytokinesis or the pinching off of the cytoplasm. And then of course, nothing changes with the chromosomes. We still end up for every single chromosome, all 23 pairs, we get a maternal and a paternal copy. And so throughout this entire process, the cell has remained diploid. At the beginning, we have a diploid cell because for every chromosome, there's a copy from mom and a copy from dad. And then even when the DNA duplicates, we still consider this cell to be diploid because within this cell for each chromosome, half the DNA is from mom and half is from dad. You can also just go by the number of centromeres. In this case, for each chromosome, we have one centromere for each, and then same here, we have one centromere for each. So like I said, this cell is technically diploid the whole way through, and now, through each of these stages, we have produced two identical daughter cells, each of which is diploid and has the exact same DNA as the parent cell. Thanks everyone.